Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing great. Today is another fun day. Fun day, fun day. Today, we're going to dedicate all of our time to systems, part whole systems. The S in DSRP. The S in DSRP. Nice. And in, we're going to land in the zoom in, zoom out, move, and do some practice and examples around that as well. The move that, that helps you build the skill of the universal yes. pattern and structure of system part whole. Yes, yeah. that is right. So I want to talk about a lot of things, really. I want to talk about how we know they exist, what 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 does it mean for us to be aware of part whole systems? How does that help us in life? Uh, I want to talk about part and whole, sort of the elements of systems, and then mm -hmm. also I have a long list. <clears throat> yeah, and also talk about how we actually practice getting good at these things. If you've listened to the other patterns, you're going to see a. A theme yes because the research that we've done has focused on sort of validating or or um, proving as scientists don't say prove very often but the general public thinks of it as proving um, certain things so you know with each of the patterns we kind of went through the same steps yeah. research wise in terms of proving that they exist uh, mm -hmm. existentially in nature in the real world proving that they are operating universally in the mind you know proving that they again i'm using the word proving in a way that i normally evidence use for it. evidence for, for. um uh, the, mm -hmm. to what extent we're biased around using part whole mm -hmm. systems uh Evidence for the awareness of part whole systems, part whole this pattern, uh, whether or not that affects your uh, performance. Yes, all those kinds of things. You'll see a pattern across all of these uh, four structures. Yes, so <clears throat> I think maybe it would be good to start with um, our big study, the 35,000 mm -hmm. people study, mm -hmm. where we looked at what people tend to do and tend not to do, yeah. just to kind of anchor this episode, and then we'll go into the <laughs> existence and efficacy and all of that. But if you remember, uh, we tried to reduce the results to make it easier to out of 10 people. Yeah, so that study, it, you know, again, 35,000, that's kind of a big number to conceptualize what does it mean. But if you if you sort of think of it as you have a team of 10 people and you ask them to solve a problem or to think through, think something through, what do they do? What are they going to, what are you going to witness them doing? Mm -hmm. And this study kind of tells us what generally speaking people will do. Um, and it turns out what they do, five of them get stuck. Yes. Right. They freeze up. Right. They freeze they up right away. I don't know where to start mm -hmm. thinking through a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, or anything, an issue, a situation, a problem, whatever. Um, five of them start making identities, but not others, yes. uh, which is the distinction pattern. Yep. And two and a half out of 10 mm -hmm. break stuff down into parts. Yes. Two and a half out of 10. So that means you got a team of 10 people. You're paying all of them. <laughs> two and a half of them are going to break things down into the parts. Right. And zero of them. Zero? Zero yeah. of your 10 paid employees or your 10 team members mm -hmm. are going to think about those things in terms of what they're a part of, meaning the whole. Yes. They're not, zero of them are going to go a level up. And two and a half of them are going to go a level down. Yeah. And the other thing we found in that study that was interesting was, okay, so we, what you just said, we tend to be able to, two, two and a half out of 10, tend to break things into parts. Mm -hmm. But what we also saw is 
where what we tend not to do is we don't, like you said, we don't go up levels of scale. So mm -hmm. we always talk about plus one and minus one. Yeah. Well, we're good at minus one, sometimes minus two, like parts and then parts of parts, but we're not good at putting things in that wider plus context. One so that's or plus two. So that's a weakness. Yeah. It's a bias. Yeah. Right? It's a weakness and a bias. So it's, and, and being a, the reason I say the bias part is because the bias, being aware of the bias actually transforms the weakness, right? Yes. So when we're aware of a bias, then we can go, oh, you know, I, I will tend not to think plus one. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to think plus one. Exactly. So being aware of, of what people tend to do and also what they tend not to do helps us see the bias. And so with systems part whole, systems is the pattern. Mm -hmm. Part whole is the two elements that make up that pattern. And what what the research is showing is that we're okay. We're not great because the only two and a half people do the part yeah. part. We're okay at that. Two and a half being not so great. No, but it's not. So we need to do more drilling down mm -hmm. and we need to do more thinking wow. up. Yeah. And ironically, a lot of what we hear from, you know, CEOs and executive teams and people, uh, anytime executives are choosing to tr train up their middle management to try to bring them up into upper management, what they're looking for is they want to see people that have what they call enterprise thinking, yeah. right? They want people to think one or two levels up. Yeah. And they're trying to train people into thinking one or two levels up because we all get pretty good at I give you a task. You you're going to think naturally break it down about, oh, well, how do I break this task down? Yeah. But you're not always going to think about, well, this task that I was just giving given, what does it fit into? What is it for? What is its purpose? How is right. it going to play out above me that we tend not to do? Yeah. Um, and even breaking it down, a lot of people, like like the research shows, seven and a half people are not going to even really know how to no. tend to break it down. Meaning the thing is the thing. They don't think about what is it made up of? How yeah. can I better understand it? I mean, the other thing I, I think is important about um, part whole systems, and I'm hesitant to use the C word category in front mm, of you because no, I know how you feel That's about categories. Yeah. But I do think it's important to address the fact that when we're organizing things into part whole systems, mm -hmm. often those become category categories yes. sometimes or groupings. Yes. And one of our weaknesses is that we don't tend to question how things are organized into there groupings or categories. Yeah, and, and that's actually, as you pointed out, the, the term categories, which is widely used in cognitive science and psychology and is one of my pet peeves. I, I get on my soapbox. Um, and it, in part because part whole, this, this, this interplay between part whole is such an important idea to yeah. understand. It's, it's one of the most profound ideas and it's one of the most profound ideas that the mind is doing all the time and that nature is doing all the time. The problem is every, so there's part whole structure, mm -hmm. right? Parts are contained by holes, right? And the way that part holes are configured, it can be quite fluid in real life. It can be quite adaptive. It's, it's the old saying, you never step into the same river twice, right? right? So when we create groupings, so I tend to call things groupings because groupings are a little less, you know, we can group stuff and we can ungroup stuff. Right. But a category is something that kind of we group it and then we think that it's that it's just static and it stays right. that way. Right, right. And we also miss the idea that any group of objects is grouped based on a perspective and the perspective is right. kind of hidden. Right? right, and our research actually shows these interdependencies yes. between the systems pattern and the perspective pattern, for example, or the systems pattern and the relationship pattern. Mm -hmm. There's dependencies on these on these things, and so when we talk in terms of categories, I think we get into the 
danger zone of one that these things are permanent and static they're not right they're highly fluid and dynamic yes and two that we ignore that a huge part of that category being static or permanent is that you've you've already biased the hidden perspective that makes it so yes that's right. right that's right so i like to talk about things more in the more f- what i perceive as more fluid terms in terms of groups yeah. things group things ungroup yeah. you know you can watch a, a group of birds and they'll group and then all of a sudden they'll ungroup and they'll group into different groups you can watch you know watch nature things are constantly grouping watch a party you know, people are grouping yeah. and then ungrouping and grouping into a different set of groups. Meaning there's several ways to organize and connect uh, things into groupings. Absolutely. It's not only one way. Yes. And and we do, though, because of categories and hierarchies and all kinds of things, we tend to believe that once things are grouped, that's the only way they can be. Yes. Used. Like species, for example. Yes. Things like that. Yeah. But what we're learning from research is there's more fluidity and possibility in the way you can actually think about different Absolutely. Groups of things, right? There's much more dynamicism and fluidity right. in the way we group things. And by the way, if you're wondering, like maybe that feels too esoteric or theoretical, like why does this matter? Well, you might group something one way, say the parts of a, of a particular piece of product or machinery, mm-hmm. and your next big innovation isn't actually inventing something new. Right. It's just grouping something different. Yeah. Your next big innovation, your next big discovery could literally be not that you're discovering or innovating something totally new, Mm -hmm. right? It's simply that you're organizing what you have differently. Slightly differently. Slightly differently. So the way we organize things can dramatically change the way they show up in the world. That's right. That's right. right. And so paying attention to part whole organization and the systems that result as a as a result of that part whole organization is one of the most well, one of four of the most important cognitive or thinking skills yeah. that there are. I also think though that just from my own experience over the years, that part whole seems to be the most obvious and therefore the not as profound as you say it is. People, you know, because everybody organizes, breaks stuff into parts and, you know, they group stuff. And it seems like superficial, superficial yeah. or yeah. something that we Surface do. Surface level, yeah. And, and when you get to the level of what you're seeing where you're actually challenging how things are grouping, challenge the way things could or could be, you know, organized differently, which changes those things in and of itself, yeah, I mean, That's part perfect. whole, I mean, I think you're right. First of all, I think part whole is the one that people are more familiar with than yes. anything else. And as a result of that familiarity, they're not as blown away. They're not as hot, happy mind blown emoji as uh, as they probably should be. Yes. Right. And I'll give you an example. Okay. So systems people and systems thinkers. Mm-hmm are notorious for saying the following phrase. Systems thinking is holistic. It's about the whole, not the parts. Mm -hmm. It's about seeing the forest rather than the trees. It's about being holistic, not reductionistic. Right. Right. That is, you can Google it, you can read, you know, everywhere, everywhere everywhere you go, you will run into those kinds of statements, those exact statements, and many, many statements like them, and many assumptions that come out of those statements Mm -hmm. about, about the fundamental way that systems thinking is. Right. And it's all completely wrong. Systems thinking is, yeah, it's a huge problem, right? (laughs) Systems thinking is not holistic, not reductionistic thinking. It's not synthesis, not analytics. It's not Mm -hmm. whole, not part. It's It's not not forest. It's not an either or thing because in order to understand the system, you have to understand it as a whole. Yes. And you have to understand it as parts. Yes. You have to understand the parts that make up the whole, including the relationships, which are parts. That's another place where they go wrong. 
Um, we'll do that later. We'll do that <laughs> one later. But but you you have to understand the forest and the trees. Right. You, you have to, to understand both. the analysis and the synthesis. Right. You have to understand both. It's not an either or thing. Yeah. You have to be a reductionist and a holist. Right. And and one of the things that we've said over the years and, and you know, that there's two types of people. There's people who split stuff up, people mm -hmm. who lump stuff back together. Splitters and lumpers. Right. And what, yeah. what we've been saying, and you've, you've coined the now famous phrase, splumpers. Right? Yeah. You want people who can do both, which is what we're talking about. Go up a level, down a level, up a level, down a level of scale. We need splumpers. People who can do both. You need they to be a splumper. Bigger, yeah. The bigger context, the smaller, you know, big picture, little picture, all of that. Yeah, we need yeah. these kind of amphibious people that can do both. With that, can go down to the tactical level at the, the thousand feet, and then go up to the yeah. strategic level through the operational level at thirty thousand feet, and through and all the way to the strategic level at a hundred thousand feet, and go right back down to the thousand foot tactical level to the parts. Yes, the, that's what makes somebody really an expert in any world or any field is that they can they can traverse. That hundred thousand foot down to sea level, in that yeah. fast, and and they just have no problem going through the strategic, operational, or tactical level, or the hundred thousand foot level to the to the parts. Yep, they have no problem. They understand the ecological aspects and dynamics of the force, but they also understand the the tree and the and the yes. and the and you know what they understand? Yeah. They understand that the tree is a part of the forest. But it's also a whole that has parts that has parts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's really important because when we talk about the systems pattern of DSRP, the S in DSRP, we're talking about the interplay between part and whole. Yes. Which has a relationship. Parts are part of the whole. The whole contains the parts. But also every whole is a part of some larger whole. Yeah. And every part is a whole with lesser parts. Yes. And those dynamics are really, really important to not only to natural systems, but to the way that the human mind works. Yeah, and I think what, what people will start to pick up on is, generally speaking, systems thinkers do both. Mm -hmm. They see parts, they, they see both. They see identities, they see others, yes. right? They see action, they see reaction, yes. point and view. And it's about seeing both and the simultaneity of both at the same time in all things. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let's get let's get to the the research. Sure. The fun part where I get to nerd out about the research. What I want I want to bring up Not yet. one thing. Yes. Which is the, a case study that we did many many years ago before mm -hmm. even this research was which is the one with the Are you talking about the preschoolers? Apple? Yeah, and the, they yeah. were pre-K. They were pre-K. And K, kids, so they right? were Four, like four years old. Four years old. Yeah. And they they were in schools. Yep. And so they had a uh, they have a standard, a, a yeah. learning standard. And this particular learning standard that we were doing a case study on was called community helpers, which yes, is where right. they learn about fire policemen and firemen and Mailman. all that kind of stuff. All Mailman, the people in your all community the that help you. Exactly. Yes. So these little kids are learning about that in this particular lesson that they do every year. Um, was about firemen. And yeah. so the firemen would actually come with the fire truck and That's park right. in the parking, parking lot, lot and the kids would go out and meet the firemen, play with the truck and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Then the kids would build a fire truck out of cardboard and then they would draw a fire truck, yep. right? And That's they right. would label all the parts. Yes. And they do this every year. So we have a long uh, history of how they do it, what they do, and we knew what they did, would do. Yeah. They, they would make a, a, a picture of a fire truck that had about four parts on it or five parts on it. Not even, I was like- Yeah, like a couple a parts. steering wheel, wheels, and a box. Yeah, and they build the fire truck out of cardboard and it would have wheels, a steering wheel, the front, the back, and a ladder. So how many is that? Wheels, steering wheel, front, back, ladder. So it had five pieces, Yeah. five parts to the fire yep. truck. And that would affect the structure that they build and the structure that they drew. It would also affect the, the number of words they learned, like ladder, That's wheels, right, the, vocabulary. You know, the, the vocabulary. Okay, so we come in and we say, well, let's teach them part whole. Yes. Just this one out of four patterns. 
We're going to teach them part whole. And they made a song or something. That's how you teach sports. That's how you teach four year olds, right? So they sang a song. Every part's a whole. Every hole's a part. Every hole has parts. Blah, yeah, blah, they blah. have hand gestures. Yeah, they had hand do. gestures and stuff. So, so this is like a, a couple minute intervention, like maybe five minutes where yeah. they talk about part whole. Everything we just said, part whole. Yep. Every hole has parts. Every part is a hole that has parts. Mm -hmm. Every hole is a part that is part of something larger, basically. Yep, yep. They go out this time. They bring the fire truck. They bring again. the fire the truck, next, the this firemen. Is the next year this is the, the next truck. year. With this treatment of part whole, yep. just being made aware of what we're talking about here. Part and whole. Part and whole and how they interact. They go out. Yes. They see more. They see more stuff. They see stuff they don't even have words for, so they have to invent words for it, like the grippy stuff on the ladder. So it wasn't just a ladder. It was a ladder that had cr the crossy things. The rungs. and the Right, but they didn't even know the word for rungs. Right. So the crossy things. And then the crossy things had the grippy stuff. Yep. But that opened up the possibility of having new words, new mm -hmm. vocabulary for those things, and they came up with, you know, words. And so... so they go back in, they they do all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Their pictures have more stuff on them. There's more stuff. More parts. More parts. Yeah. So they're seeing more. Yep. And more vocabulary for yep. each one of those parts. Yep. So they're learning more words. Yes, that's right. The structure that they build has more stuff on it. Yep. The, the fire truck has... Not just a steering wheel. It's got like dashboards and, you know, yeah. the ladder has pieces to it. And, the yeah. you know, the back part has little valve thingies on the side the that they draw. And door. the door had a handle. And I remember. They, they literally created, they saw more parts. Because they learned part whole. Because they learned part yes, whole. That's right. right. And they were able to see this fire truck as part of the larger community. Yes. And as part of a larger function. Yes, right? that's right. That's with just a few minutes yep. of awareness of what your brain is doing. And they just went at it. And they, they, it. they literally took apart with their minds this fire truck to the nth degree mm -hmm. from just learning part whole. So that's how powerful. It seems like such a simple thing. Yeah. And now imagine those kids, they just keep going and getting better and better at part whole. I mean, you could study part whole for the, your whole life. And just get better. Yeah, and better but at let it. me tell the second part of the story. Oh yeah, this happened at the beginning of the school year in That's September, right. and I think it was around January, February of that year. <laughs> they had there was a prison near the school. They had an escape of a prisoner, and That's they had right. to lock down the school. And so the teacher says, "Okay, we're doing a lockdown. Everybody, go you know to the back corner of the room. Turn out the lights. Be quiet." She's lock going the door. Lock yeah. the door. She's going through it all, and these are little kids. They're four years That's old. Scary. And they're probably terrified. So they do the lockdown. Thankfully, it resolves without incident. And then they lift the lockdown, the lockdown yeah. up, and they put their desks where they need to do, and they sit down. And one little girl says to the teacher, "She says, Mrs. Smith. Smith's not a real name, but Mrs. Smith. She's like." Can we part hold the lockdown? Can we part hold the Just lockdown? Take a minute and take that in this four year old child who's terrified and is trying to understand what just happened, a traumatic event, knows that the way that she can understand it is to break it down. And has the language yes. to, to ask for it. Yes. And nobody told her to use that. No. To understand it. No. She took that from the fire truck. So. Yeah. So this is the amazing part. This is called transfer. Yep. And transfer is the holy grail of learning theory. And we, we often don't know how to do it. We, we're not very good at increasing transfer. And the reason transfer is kind of like a really important part of learning theory is far transfer. So near transfer is I teach you something in a particular domain and you're able to transfer it within that domain. Yeah. But far transfer is I teach you something in one domain and you're able to use it in a completely different context or domain. Mm -hmm. Well, what she did is called far transfer. Yeah. Right. That's she learned something in about fire trucks and community helpers and firemen. Yeah. 
And then she said, oh, oh, I could use this over here in lockdowns. Yeah, something that's completely... Something completely unrelated, and no adult told her to do that. No. She had an intuition. She had an intuition that that tool that she learned to take apart fire trucks would be cognitively helpful to take apart lockdowns. Those are the moments yeah. that make everything worth it. Yeah. There was, there's more to the story, though. That's right. Because then they went to an orchard. <laughs> yeah. We get an email. Mm-hmm. And it says, Dear Dr. Cabrera, I think the teacher helped them write yeah, the email and everything. And we, we were wondering, we went to the apple orchard, and we think, we think <laughs> that we have discovered a new part of the apple that maybe scientists don't know about. Nobody knows. About maybe it. nobody yeah. knows about this new part of the apple that we've discovered. Right. So they're thinking like a scientist, right? They're, they're, they're breaking it down, yeah. and they maybe have discovered this new part of the apple. Mm-hmm. And they called it the belly button. Yes. Of the apple. That's, That's the, the name, name they gave it. Because yes. when you're a scientist, you get to name the things yeah. you discover, right? Yeah. So they they named it the belly button of the apple. And mm-hmm. they described it as the part that has the fuzzy bit at the end. Yeah. At the and part. they were wondering mm-hmm. if we could tell them as scientists, <laughs> how, do, do scientists know about this? About this part. Right. So it turns out scientists do know about yeah. this particular part. It's called the calyx. That's right. Right? And it's part of the flower structure that leads to the to the fruit. And uh, but it's called the calyx, C A L Y X. That's right. So we we said this is great that you discovered this. It turns out scientists do know about this part. Didn't you feel a little bad? A, I know, I know. <laughs> because you wanted, they really wanted to. They really have wanted to it. have discovered. Bad. But yeah. but that's the important part is they did discover it. For them, yeah. That's For them, it. they went through a scientific process and they discovered it yeah. in the same way that they. What they didn't do is discover something that nobody knew about. But they did the process of discovery. That's right. That's which is exactly point. what we want our young people to be doing every day is the process of discovering. Because then if they get good at that process, then they really will be discovering things yeah. that nobody knows about or products that For nobody real. knows about or innovations or, you know, new science or cutting edge things, right? Yeah. Cures for cancer. That's the process. And so they used the part hole on, at the apple orchard. Again, far transfer. They used it in the lockdown, far transfer. They used it in in the uh in the in the uh yeah. fire truck. Yeah. Remarkable. Yeah, and they did that all on their own. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. And just to finish the story. There's more. Though that one gl- class of pre K kids. Oh, right. Met yeah, no. all of the pre-K benchmarks for Common Core and also all of the kindergarten benchmarks in That's one right. year and had to have a special teacher assigned to them. That understood DSRP. Yeah. <laughs> for That's right. the next year because, <laughs> because they, they were, were so, so far ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. true story. Yeah. A little bit of a side side. We track, love our right? stories. Yeah. And, you know, we're allowed to tell stories because exactly. we can. Um, all right. So, let's talk a little bit about... The research on existence and efficacy yes. of systems, not to be kind of nerdy in the way I said that, but. Of S, systems part whole. Systems yeah. part whole, yes. And, you know, I called it systems. You could have called it, you know, sorting. You could have called it a lot of things, organizing, grouping. grouping. Um, sometimes people get confused by why it's called systems. It, it was just a word that's describing that the. The interaction of part and whole leads to the systemization of things, the organization, the groupings of yeah. things. And so nature's grouping, our mind is grouping and ungrouping. Okay. Um, and so the S in DSRP, when we talk about it, you should think about that as as more just the, the grouping of things or the ungrouping of things or yeah. the nesting of things, not necessarily systems as we talk about them in system science or systems, you know, engineering or, you know, yeah. whatever that kind of yeah. system. Well, so you talked about the existence of systems in nature, mm-hmm. uh, part whole. Yep. Um, there were a couple of studies that we in particular found in our analysis of other research to show mm-hmm. that they existed in nature. Again, across physics, chemistry, Biology, psychology, sociology, economics, business, policy, astronomy, 
you know, across the disciplines, we see part whole structure universally. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we did. I, I there was many a, many yeah. studies show this, uh, we'll this phenomenon. We'll number. Um, so let's talk about a few of them that I've got highlighted. Mm -hmm. So the first one was um, by Pellegrino. Yep. I don't know if they're related to Pellegrino water, but Pellegrino. Pretty same sure name. they're not. I know. <laughs> they did, and I'm going to refresh your memory, and then we'll yeah. talk about the significance. They did morphs of dogs and cats. With chimps. And had chimps look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? Yep. So um, the idea was to see if monkeys could uh, categorize the difference between dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. And they found that 90% of the time... They could they could do that. They could sort them into groups of cats and dogs. Yeah, and, and not only that, they could do it. So they they're showing them pictures of dogs, yep. pictures of cats, and they get those right. Yeah. But they could. So that's kind of distinguishing, right? Uh -huh. But then they would show them morphed pictures of yep. like seventy percent dog, thirty percent cat. Yep. And they would get those right. They would get yes. the the part the partial nature yeah. of the morphed images right. Yeah. Sixty percent, fifty percent. Yep. It's kind of crazy if you it think about it. It is kind of crazy. Um, then there was another and one. And the the, yeah. the morphed cat dog pictures are they're kind of creepy. They're creepy. They look a little bit to me like um, weird mountain lions or something. They, they're strange they look looking. evil. Bullshit. But I think, you know, it's why, like, dogs are cat dogs are cute and cats are cute, but dog cats are not cute. They're strange. They're weird looking. Anyway. All right. So talking about um, groupings in yes. nature. Yeah. Then um, there was another study where um, – that showed that we make groupings just, just based on language, where there were a bunch of objects and some of yes. them a, um, started with the same letter. Yeah. Like octopus, ostrich, orange. Orange. Whatever. Ohio. People sort of naturally grouped those. And they call those categories. In the study, they call those categories. Yes. But what's important about that is that the there's a relationship between those things, those parts. Mm -hmm. And that relationship is utilized as a perspective to group them that way. Yes. But they're not inherently grouped that way. No. They're just grouped that way according to that perspective. So you can see relationships of oh they all start with o yeah and that's what makes ohio group with ostrich yeah which is not something you <laughs> which is not like a, but you know at some point in time for a crossword or something it might be important to make that grouping but that grouping is very fluid and very dynamic because at yeah. other times that would be a completely erroneous grouping right well unless you're a th second grade teacher and you're trying to think of all the words all the that start words. with O. Exactly. And then right? it becomes and incredibly meaningful. In linguistic yes. category. It right? becomes a, a critical grouping. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden in another situation it's from not, another perspective, yeah. it's it's a completely erroneous, unimportant yep. uh, grouping. And yeah. then there was another study that looked at grouping by things like color. Color, like red things, like yeah. stop signs and lobsters and... Stuff what like else that. are red things? You think of some red things. Roses, strawberries, yeah. Yeah. fire trucks. Yep. Yeah. And then there was another study that showed we naturally inherently sort of categorize things by function. Yes. Right. Like writing implements become a category, musical instruments. Musical instruments. You know all those worksheets in school where it's like match these things up, group them in a category, baseball bats. Yeah. So what's what, so this is interesting, right? Because – this study is saying, you know, we're we group stuff by color, we group stuff by the letter, we group stuff by the function. There's all these different ways that we group stuff mm -hmm. by, meaning from yes. the perspective of. That's right. right. Seeing the relationships between them and then turning that into a perspective that groups the thing, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Anything could be a perspective. By which you group By something. which you group something. Yeah. Anything, not just those categories, those categorical yeah. perspectives, but anything could be used to group. Yeah. And so the function of grouping, the function of organizing parts into a whole is an infinitely large set, yes. which could be 
anything could cause things to group. Well, what's interesting about that, yeah. what you just said, is that that happens in nature. Yes. And also in your mind. That's right. So nature can organize things in an infinite way, infinitely possible number of, you know, infinite. Oh, I'm saying that wrong. Infinite numbers of ways. Yep. Yeah. And in our own mind, we can do that. We can we can organize things in any way. In any different way. Anything. We want. Yeah. But also that means that then there's often a difference. Yeah. And so what we want to do is try to figure out like sometimes we want to be creative. Like if we're writing a Harry Potter novel or something like that. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. You can you can have three headed dogs and you can be very creative about the way you group yeah. things. You could you could group a a part whole of a giraffe's body with a lion's head and yes. you could put those two together and make a creative new animal yes right but you could also you might also want to get in greater alignment with the reality on the ground which is how are things grouping in reality right yes. how are these terrorist networks yes. grouped Yes. So that we understand how they're working. Yeah. Well, that, that we want to make sure that our our mental model of the grouping is mimicking how mimicking it's how it's actually happening. Yes. Either both of those are part whole grouping, but they're but they're just different you know purposes. Well, so we talked about in the beginning that we tend to be able to break things into parts, but that we don't question how things are organized. We don't go up and down and and one of the studies that you and I have been highlighting is this idea of bias. Yes. That we're biased more towards breaking stuff down and seeing parts. Maybe. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So why does that matter? Well, it just matters if if I said to you, you know, you're biased towards uh working your chest in a in a in the gym, yeah. you know, bench pressing. Yes. Yeah. versus working your back. Well, then, then when you go into the gym next today, you're going to say, oh, maybe I should do some, you know, or or the classic one is, uh, you know, we skip leg day. <laughs> no, we right? have tiny maybe, legs. Maybe, <laughs> you know, people are biased towards skipping leg day, right? So you got to do some legs. Big up top. Because right? you're tiny. big up top yeah, and you're yeah. tiny down low. So, so we're it's out of the balance. same thing. We're out of balance <laughs> in our yeah. thinking. The bias just tells us where we're out of balance. It tells us what our default is. If your default is to break stuff down into parts, then, yeah, start thinking some more in holes. Where systems thinking folks went wrong is that because, without knowing this research, they noticed that people tended towards breaking stuff down. And, oh, OK, yeah, but that doesn't mean systems thinking isn't about that. Right. It just means... We need to pay attention to the holistic aspect of things also, also, yeah. not instead of. Yes. Right? Yes. So it doesn't mean stop doing this. It means do this and this. Right. So being aware of that bias that we all have towards zooming into things and bringing yes. parts is a way that we can then say, okay, I have to make sure I'm asking myself, how do I go level up? And how do I go another level up and put things across levels of scale to better understand them? Yeah. Right? That's how they exist. That's yeah, and there's this thing that we, we should probably point out. Like if you have some parts, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a part and you say, well, if you're going to be a system singer, you need to think about the whole. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so that makes you a system thinker, right? This person's a reductionist and this mm -hmm. person's a holist, right? right? Or a systems thinker. Yeah. But then you go, well, that's part of something. Yes. So, no, oh, so this person's a reductionist and this person's <laughs> a, a systems thinker Infinite. and a holist. Infinite. And then you go, well, but that has a whole. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, was, you know, this person's a reductionist and this person's <laughs> a systems thinker and holistic. And you go, and, and it, it's like kind of infinite. Yeah. Right? So, th so then that gets us to the only people in the world who are based on based on this erroneous thing that systems thinking experts say all the time the only people in the world that can classify as systems thinkers are like people that study the universe you know well, but and but of course the universe the metaverse. is part of the metaverse yeah. right so <laughs> so you know it just it doesn't make any sense to say that 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 the you know you just always have to be holistic. No, if you're trying to study this 
thing here. You probably should consider this stuff here and maybe, you know, a couple levels of this stuff, right? That's right. You've got to think about the whole that contains the thing that you care about and the parts. Yes. And you, so you probably want, that's why we sometimes say plus one, zoom out, plus one, zoom in, plus minus one. Yeah. Plus one, minus one. Yep. Zoom in, zoom out from the place that you're concerned with. Where Meaning it's relevant yeah. to you. What yeah. are you interested in? What are you trying to figure out? What are you trying to solve? What's important to you? Okay, well, zoom out Yep. and zoom in yeah. from that thing that you're concerned and about. And do both. And do both. Make sure you're doing yeah. both. Zoom in, zoom I mean, we out. We teach our students that yeah. all the time to do both. It's just zoom. I sometimes just call it zoom, zoom because I like that. Uh, Belle, you don't like Zoom Zoom? No. I think it's cool. You know what it reminds me of when zoom you say Zoom Zoom? It reminds me of when the dogs at like 545 yeah. at night, they're just like running around <laughs> running the house around. crazy. And that, that, that zoom makes, Zooms. I associate with Zoom Zoom. That, yeah. That's what I associate with. Because it's Zoom. They're zoomies. Zoomies. Yeah. yeah. They run around like nuts. But Zoom Zoom means zoom in, zoom out. Zoom in, yeah. zoom out. Yeah. Whatever you're interested in, zoom in, zoom out. Yes. And we're going to show that move today, I think, right? Oh, yeah, we are. The other part of research that we did, which which has to do with the efficacy, is the fish tank study. Yep. If you remember. You might want to describe what efficacy means to to a researcher that makes sense, but I mean, yeah. it's not a word people use very often. What okay. do we mean by efficacy? The, the degree to which it's it's useful, the yeah. degree that it, it creates a value, that the effect is valuable. Yeah. So, knowing it. so it's like... If you know this thing or you know how to use yeah. this thing, does it have a positive effect on something? Like, right. you're, are you better at work? Or are you better in your personal life? Are yes. you better at doing something, problem solving or yes. thinking complexly about stuff? Right. Because we often say we want to study the exis existential and the efficacy. Yes. And what we mean by that is we want to... We want to determine with evidence whether these patterns exist... Yes. In mind and nature. Yeah. And then also, if knowing about these patterns actually causes you to be better at something, that's the yeah. efficacy part. So or, it's, yeah. it's quite simple if you think about it. Like, we first, we want to know, are these real things Yes. in both in the world and in the mind? Which, yeah. Which we call the existential. Are they, do they exist? Yes. And then are they efficacious? Meaning, do are they do they have a an effect that we actually want? Yes, we could yeah. call we could say effectiveness. Effectiveness or yeah. effect. So, yeah. so we we set out to to think that to think about that is is you know what is the value? Does it increase our thinking? Does it make our thinking more robust? We talked about the fish tank study. Yes. When we talked about distinctions. Yeah. So we did the fish tank study across all four patterns. Yeah. In the case of systems, part whole systems, it's the same thing. People were given an image of the fish tank. They were asked to describe it. Then they were taught, taught only a one minute text part whole of on part of kind of what we've been talking about. That everything has parts. Yes. Every whole is a part. Yes. Every part is a whole. That's it. Right. Yep. Then they were asked to describe the fish tank again. And just like the pre-K kids who learned it, they saw more. They saw more in the fish tank. Their language more, was more complex. Their cognitive complexity was, you know, increased based on what they to, to a highly statistically yes. significant degree. Yeah. So, so these are like the fish tank. I mean, the uh, the the kindergartners we yeah. talked about. That was more of like a case study. Yes. But this is a study where we saw highly statistically significant results from a one minute intervention or one minute treatment of them being made a, simply by making them aware yes. of the SPW pattern, the systems part whole pattern. Yep. They were more complex in their thinking. They saw more they mm -hmm. distinguished more. They made, just like the kids, like you're saying. Yeah. Like they they saw more. Yes. In the fish tank. Right. And broke things down into parts and parts into parts. Yeah. And all based that on their stuff. vocabulary and the yeah. answers and the complexity of what they wrote, and then just uh, the other thing that we should say, mimicking uh, what we said about the other about distinctions, mm -hmm. is we also looked at systems in isolation relative to competence and confidence. Yes. And we are also, as humans, overly confident in our perceived ability to 
Let's which see. is again called the Dunning Kruger effect, which yes. is that our competence is lower than our confidence in these types of things. So, so people think they're better at systems part whole than they actually are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we set out to to look at the existence of part whole and in, in particular the interdependencies between the systems part whole pattern and the other patterns because. DSRP is essentially a theory. It's a mathematical theory that makes a bunch of predictions. It actually makes quite a number of predictions about the universe. Yep. And um, and one of the predictions is that the, you can't do systems part whole without doing some perspective and some relationships and some distinguishing. That's a that's a hypothesis in a sense. And yes. we wanted to test: is it true that that you can't do those things? And also, is it true that that everybody will do part whole? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the first thing we did, and, and um, Alina will put up an image yeah. of this question. We had, remember, we had a circle, a triangle, and a square. Yeah. And then another circle, triangle, and they were all different colors, circle, yeah. triangle, square. And then we had one that was a blank. And we said, fill this in. So and this is a standard kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a type of question that you would see on an IQ test. Right, it's visually oriented, so there's mm -hmm. you don't have to really know language or anything like yep. that, and you're trying to figure out some logic. There's a there's logic to the puzzle that gives you the answer. And what was interesting is, you know, 88% of people picked the square of the same color of the row of shapes, mm -hmm. which showed that you know they were able to see that pattern across the shapes and across the color. But interestingly. What that meant is they were also seeing two systems, right? Yes. Two groupings. Two groupings based on the relationships from one to the next to the next. So they're they're seeing both relationships and groupings. At the same time. At the same time in order to arrive at the answer. To pick the, the correct yeah. answer. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. And and um, so that... that gets to some of the interdependency stuff that you were talking about. Then we started thinking about sorting, mm -hmm. testing sorting, yes, and seeing how people sort stuff, to see the patterns of how people sort stuff. Mm -hmm. If you remember, we started with what we called the world famous sort stuff study. Yes. <laughs> That's a tongue come up with a great Sort name. stuff study. Sort Say stuff. that 10 times fast. Um, people were given um, a list or a, a set of common items like yes. a wrench, a pen, a broom, a hammer. I can't remember. There were six objects and they mm -hmm. were all different types of things, but things that people would recognize. And they were asked to sort them, mm -hmm. to group them, for lack of a better word. And what we found was, uh, strangely, uh, a wide variety of how people could sort them. Mm -hmm. Right, based on different characteristics. Yes. Some by function, some by color, some by name. Like we were saying in the beginning, it can be sorted in a lot of ways. Yes, and and what that showed is if you don't tell somebody the perspective by which you want them to sort things, they will find many different ways to sort them. Yes, and it, and and the reverse of that is true, which is. If you, if, for example, if you want to direct a team to figure some sorting thing out mm -hmm. and you want to be very innovative and inventive, then don't give them a sorting perspective. But if you want them to like focus in on one particular thing, then do give them a perspective. Right. 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 So it just kind of depends. Do you want to create options or do you want to limit options? Yes. And, you know, the, the, that's how sorting works. That's how part whole works is that it, it's dynamically dependent on perspective taking. Yes. Yes. And that's really important. And it's something that we miss a lot in categorization theory and, and some of yes. these. Uh, yes. And I think we had six objects and there were something like 243 unique groupings yeah. with different names when a perspective or uh, was not provided. So yes. then you uh, you provide a perfect segue into the buttons study. Yes. Remember that this is the world famous sort buttons study, yes. right? Where people were given uh, images of buttons, different colors, different number of holes, different, different sizes. sizes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So, and so they were asked to sort them. Yep. Guess what? They sort them in a lot of different ways. And they also uh, 
given the perspective of sort them by, you know, yeah. the number of holes or the color or the size, they they get it right. But otherwise, they sort in a lot of different ways. Yeah, and it was overwhelmingly so. Mm -hmm. So when they were asked to, to sort by color, they all got it yeah. the same. Overwhelming. Button, but number of um, holes in the button, they all got it right. Size, mm -hmm. small, medium, large, they all got it right. So we're really good. When somebody gives us a perspective by which to sort things, we're really good at that. Right. Right. But think of how many times, I mean, because people watching this or listening to this might, they might go like, no, duh. Like if, if you tell people to sort a bunch of buttons by yeah. the color, then Super of easy. course they're going to get that right. Right. Mm -hmm. But think of how many times we get into arguments with each other around the exact same thing, which is, no, this is the way things are. That's and, right. the, and you go, no, this is the way things are. And we're like, no, this is the way, right? And you're like, oh, you're just sorting them by color and you're sorting them by, by size. Right. And you're arguing about which is right. But they're both right. They're both right. It depends which perspective you're organizing it by. That's right. Right? So... If you recognize these structures, you can kind of, you can kind of go, why, why are we arguing about this? Like, if you want to organize them by size, and obviously when you get into more complex things, it's you know it's a little bit more complex than that. But yeah. it, but it comes down to something that simple, which is, this person over here seems to be organizing based on highlighting this particular perspective, and this person over here is organizing the situation based on this other perspective. And so, yeah, it totally makes sense why they see it this way and they see it this way. Yeah. What doesn't make sense is why we're willing to kill each other over it. You know, why are we willing to fight so much over it when if you ask this other person to organize the same situation from the perspective, they would they would arrive at that same conclusion. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, categories are problematic. Yes. Very problematic. They're very problematic. In all kinds of ways. So, so what's interesting is what we're showing is that we see nature is organized into part whole systems. Mm -hmm. We organize things in our mind into part whole systems. We show the interdependency between you actually can't make a sorting without, not, without making a distinction and seeing relationships among things and also taking a perspective. So we That's see right. that interdependency between S and D. And R and P, yes. which we're going to see across all four patterns. Yes, and, and we, those are all predictions that DSRP theory right. makes, right? And they turn out to be valid predictions. Yes, and then we also we also saw that awareness of just the idea of part whole systems increases the complexity, the cognitive complexity of things you're thinking about, and brings what you're thinking about better into alignment with. Which is quite structure. remarkable if you think about it. Like yeah. just, again, just the awareness of this yes. structure, like the example of the kindergartners, just that awareness mm -hmm. changes the ballgame. Yes. Right? So like yes. awareness is pretty cheap. Awareness is pretty easy. Like <laughs> all you got to do, like we got this amazing brain. Yep. And all you got to do is make it aware of systems part whole or distinction identity other, or, you know, relationships, action, reaction, or perspectives, part and point and view. You 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 make it aware of systems part whole, and all of a sudden it can do all these amazing things. Yes. More effectively. Yes. Think more robustly. Think more dynamically. Think more complexly. Solve problems better. Yes. Faster. Yes. Cheaper. For sure. Remarkable. And just like what you're saying, so the question is, how do we become aware of that? So what we have done is we've reduced this question to something you can practice, which is the move. Yes. Because we know people are really good at zooming in, not zooming out. So we've created the move, zoom in, zoom out, Yep. which is designed to teach people how to see parts and holes and That's understand right. systems differently. That's right. So the move, again, real simple. You start with place where you're starting at. So what, I don't know, what do you... Uh, Just say a project. A project. So this is the project. Yep. Project X. Right? Mm -hmm. And then what are the parts of the project? So we just put those in like indented. You could think of it as yeah. a, as a uh, you know, an indenting 
kind of thing. And then what is the project a part of and what is that a part of, let's say. You, you don't have to, you can go up however many things. So what is what is the project a part of? Mm -hmm. And what is that a part of? Or you could say, what is the project a part of? Meaning it's part it's part of more than one thing. It could be part of several things. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, th this is the zoom out. Up. up. Right? Up is out. Right. So we just think of this as the zero level. This is plus one, plus two. Yep. Right? And then, you know, this is minus one. Yeah. And then, you know, one of the parts of the project. So it might be like hiring, you know, you got to hire some people and you got to design. Marketing. What? Marketing. And then you got to do marketing or, what, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Right. And of course, this part can be a whole that has parts and so on and so on. Yeah. And this could be an initiative. This could be a marketing strategy. Like this project could be part of an initiative, which could be part of a larger strategy for market share. Yeah. Or, so it's just know, zoom, it? zoom out. Yep. Zoom in. And if you practice this, and again, recognizing that the, we're more biased to this than we are to that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to we're going to we're going to tend towards doing this over that. But remember, only two and a half of out of ten are going to do this. Yeah. So don't don't think, oh, this is easy. Two and a half out of ten people are going to do this. Yep. Most people are going to do this, which is. There's a project. Oh, man, <laughs> Project X. Holy moly, what do I do? Yeah. Right? Two and a half out of ten people are going to do this, and zero people are going to do this yeah, out of ten. I, let's just slow that down a minute and take, <laughs> take the implications of that. So yeah. let's say you're a person that just does this, and then you start doing the project, yeah. and you've got a whole team of people, and everyone's assuming that it's this just this Project X. Yeah. Nobody's taking the time to break it down into its constituent parts to better understand what the project actually is. Yeah. So down the road, Oof. they they have the terrible results because they didn't start by really thinking more deeply about what is this by looking at what right. its parts are. And then imagine that all they do is this. Yep. And they don't think about what are the wider implications of Project X. What yeah. other projects does Project X have to interact with yep. in order to be successful? Yep. Right? Yep. So it's it's super simple to say zoom in, zoom out. But you got to practice it. Because the truth is, if you don't, and our research has shown this. Yeah. All right. Our research has shown that if you don't practice these moves, right, there's five moves. Yeah. And they're the most important moves. This is one of them. Yes. If you don't practice these moves, when you get into the situation, you're not going to do it. No. Right? It's like if you don't if you don't practice shooting a basketball a certain way, when you get in the game, that that's not the time that you're going to suddenly shoot the basketball the right way no. and make the basket. You got to practice so that when you get in the game and things are actually more kind of yeah. You know, discombobulated and chaotic and stressful. You've practiced it. And so, yeah, you're just going to nail it. You're going to nail it because you practiced it. Yeah, and I think there's the other thing that's interesting is practicing a shot. You're building a muscle memory. Yes. You can do that in your mind. You're you can burn path, pathways to automatically go in yeah. and go out yep. and go in and go out instead of just in. I mean, of the two and a half that do it, right? Yeah. You can burn the pathway to do in and out. Zoom in, zoom out. It's a, it's just a muscle memory, but it's inside of here. And That's it's, right. And and we should mention also our most research, most recent batch of research, looked at the the effect of these moves on ability to solve problems. Yeah. And what we did is we took a sample of 500 and some people. Yeah. We gave them a scenario to solve, which was around a community problem around waste. And yeah, pretty saying. complex problem. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a simple problem. We They read the problem. We asked them to write out how they would think about it, how they would solve it, think yeah. it through. Then we taught them just systems, part whole Just systems. this move. Just, just this zoom move. in, zoom yeah. out, move in a one-minute video. Yeah, it was a one-minute video that showed what <laughs> we just showed you here. People watched that, and then they were asked to go back and solve the problem, think it through, and say how they would think it through. We had third-party people 
um, evaluate the robustness of each, the pre and the post answer. Mm -hmm. And what we found to a high statistical significance is that people's ability to solve problems more robustly went up by 266%. Or 266% based on a one minute yes. Yes. teaching of zoom in, zoom out. Yes, and that is real. It's remarkable. Yes, yes. So yes. practicing this move. So everything we talked about today was kind of like a little bit of background of what it, what S of DSRP is. It's made up of part and whole. Yep. It's this really deep interaction between part and whole. Yes. And the fact that every part's a whole and every whole's a part and that they these two things interact. They interact with distinctions and relationships and perspectives too. Mm -hmm. But all of that, you can kind of tie all that up into a bundle. Really, the whole, most of this conversation is background. Yep. Tie that all up into a bundle and just practice this move. Yes. Right? Because practicing this move is going to get you all It's going to get you all that. Practicing this move is going to get you, according to the research, you know, 266% increase in your ability to solve problems if you practice. And practice means, you know... Go out in the world, see it in places when you're driving to work, when you're walking on your walk, deep, part hole the tree, you know, yeah. part hole the forest, part hole the road, part hole the ditch when you're on a walk, when you're going to work and you see a billboard, yeah. part hole the billboard. You know, why, why are the, the, why are those particular pictures and images and words on the, why did somebody decide to group those from what perspective? Were they grouping those words and things to make that advertisement of that billboard? Yeah, but it's not just breaking down physical stuff. It's, you know, what is a healthy relationship? What are yeah. the parts of a healthy relationship? What is a re why is a healthy relationship a part of something bigger? Like, how does it fit into the context of how I want to live? Yeah, do you remember when, we, when the kids were little? Our kids? Yeah, yeah. our kids. We used to... We, <laughs> when, they were <laughs> when they were little, we used to do, like, what is, what is mealtime? Oh, yeah, the parts of dinner. The parts of dinner, yes. right? Yeah. Because they would always say, I'm done, can I go? I'm done eating. I'm done eating. And we would say, well, dinner is not just eating. Dinner right. is um, eating, mm -hmm. uh, nutrition, you know, uh, um, talking with each mm -hmm. other, uh, manners. Their favorite. Their manners. favorite was <laughs> manners. So it, dinner had more parts than just eating, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, there was one other, wasn't love. there? Love. Love. In love. Yeah. How could so, you forget the love? love. <laughs> yeah. So it was like we're discussion, eating, love, and manners. Mm -hmm. And so so we literally would take like a block with the little kids and we'd say, you know, dinner is made up of four things. Mm -hmm. There are four parts to dinner. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's not just one thing. Yeah. So if you, you might be done with eating, but are we done talking? Are we done being loving? Are we done with practicing manners, mm -hmm. that type of thing, it's it's more than just one yeah. thing. Yeah. And so, you know, part whole is something that we could do anywhere, anytime, with anything. For sure. And I also think it's really important what you said in the beginning, which is it seems so simple, yeah. but it really is profound if you think about it and if you really apply it and 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 allow yourself to th to see both across levels of scale to challenge the way things are organized. Yeah, I mean, that's why, in part why I told that story about like one of the things that our executive, the people we work with that are executives in the yeah, Silicon yeah. Valley and some of the top people in the world, the thing they say all the time is, boy, developing enterprise thinkers, people that can think above where they're at, how's this going to affect the, the yeah. several levels up? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how are we going to see, that's all about part whole Zoom out and relationships, which we'll get to in another podcast. But, you know, the zoom out, that's just one part of this move. Zoom out. Yeah. And then the zoom in is like, you know, oh, we, you, you've been given a task. You've got to break that down. But how do you see that task in terms of what other projects or what other things, other, other task masters do I have to talk to yeah. to make sure that when I do this task, it's integrated with other tasks or yep. it's connected to other projects yep. that are in, that's going to make it a successful completion and that's that's rare it i mean then you know executives are looking for that so yes. i mean you know this this simple move could get you the job you want 
You know, it can promotion, get it, the promotion yeah. you want. It can get you. You can understand what your kid is dealing with better. You can understand how you know you're saying something that's kind of confusing to me in our marriage. And you know, can you break that down for me? What yes. what are what are you saying? Tell tell me again yeah. what you're saying because I'm not really understanding it. What are the parts of what you're saying? And it's the key to understanding your mental model. Yeah, I want to understand it. So yeah. it you know. It's something that can be applied in so many different areas universally. That's right. And it's a simple, it, it seems, it's like, it's so simple. It's disarmingly simple. And so you can, you can almost think how, Not how, so how effective could that possibly be? Yeah. Well, 266%. Yeah, that's pretty big. <laughs> Think about how many other things in your life you can increase by 266% yeah, exactly. in no time yeah, at all. Yeah. I mean, that's so pretty cool. Powerful stuff. All right, I think we've done it. Yeah. We've done what we set out to do. I'm hoping this is SPW. Yep. Systems part whole. Yep. The S in DSRP. Just getting it out there to help people with these things and, and, and sharing the research with you. So... Go out in the world and challenge groupings, see groupings, break things down. Yeah. And there's a couple parts to the things we need you to do. Oh, yeah. One, like, is it like? I can't even remember what the parts are. Like? Comment. Comment. Commenting is really important. Subscribe. Subscribe. Download. download, Share. Share. All of that. And Be the town crier. Go downtown. Stand on a box. And just start yelling about the pot. Yeah, like no, don't do that. So far, you're gonna seem crazy. No, you'll don't seem do crazy. That. Don't do that. Um, but if you want to do that, and no, don't do you that. You should totally do that. No, don't do that. Yeah, especially in a small community where you know everybody, they're gonna they're gonna be fine with that. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they would love it. But most importantly, <laughs> of all those things, remember that we appreciate. Yeah, now we're just messing and around. And listening. And we hope this has been useful. And that's a wrap. Zoom in, zoom out. Yeah. Zoom, zoom. No. Be like the dog. Zoomy, zoom, zoom. <laughs> that's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. We'll that's see a... you next time. See you next time. Mm-hmm.